Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy, with another deck review. I've been getting a bunch of used decks and decks and trade. This one I got used, and um, I don't have the box because the box was just in a state of disrepair. It was coming apart. Um, it, it looked so bad, I wondered what would be inside of it. Um, and this has a little bit of a bend in it, a little bit of a problem. I think that this, uh, that the cover just doesn't fit the pages very well in this book, so it's not very well made in that regard. Um, the cards have a little bit of wear and chip on them, but that doesn't bother me at all. Um, so I'm going to look at the guidebook here for a minute and put the cards aside, but just for a minute, and then I'll do a walkthrough of the cards. So, um, this is Guide to the Fairy Ring. This is an oracle deck, but it does have, um, well, the suits are 13 cards each. So this is actually um, a very, I don't know, it's a fairy deck. It is definitely a fairy deck um, with a paganish aspect to it because it has fairy festival cards which is you know the usual pagan holidays um, so it has nine cards and then four um, court cards and it's a, it's all according to so it's a total of 13 cards for every season so for every suit and then it has these eight um, festival cards Two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, the eight festival cards. So I have um, two fairy decks now. There's the fairy tarot. I guess that's my other Doreen Virtue deck. I thought I had another one, but I couldn't remember which one it was. Um, this is not. But this is by Anna Franklin and Paul Mason. So it has a spring court, a summer court, an autumn court, and a winter court. And I like that aspect. It's one of the things I like about it the most. Um, plus the range of characters. I love a deck like this that's full of very memorable characters, even if they're not always your most pleasing of characters. Um, and so each of these. So this is a great book just for the lore. <laughs> just just for fairy lore, and I don't have, other than my fairies oracle, I don't have one of those. There's a fairy mound reading, fairy oracle, fairy gifts readings, fairy market reading, so there's a variety of fairy readings in here. It's a fairy circle, fairy ring, I suppose. Um, anyway. And then a general one, past, present, future, mind, body, spirit, emotions. So some lovely, um, some lovely spreads in here, and I think they demonstrate one somewhere in here, using the cards for medica med medication, <laughs> meditation. Um, and then there are the cards themselves. So you can see there's Ace, and this is of Spring. Ariel. So you have um, the card, the fairy, so a story about the fairy, divinatory meanings, reversed meanings, and then working with, in this case, a sylph. Ariel being a sylph. Um, so working with a sylph. And so they all have that. Leprechaun, the card, the fairy, divinatory meaning, working with a leprechaun, reversed meaning. Now some of these um, say working with a, let's see, let's find one. This one I think is one is Bayfind. Um, no, some of them say it's don't, we don't reckon, we don't, not recommend it. Working with a fairy love, it says not recommended. <laughs> that you should avoid it. says Garkener is an Irish elf who looks like a handsome gypsy with bright black eyes and dark curly hair. His name means love talker. 
and he loves to seduce mortal women, but beware. So in other words, you don't you don't want to have to, you don't want to deal with him. <laughs> so working with a fairy love, no, not recommended. Um anyway, to me this book is worth the deck. I bought as I mentioned, I bought it used, so even then it's worth the deck. Some people don't like the cards in this deck. One thing I would plant in people's mind, and it's something that occurred to me, but I really don't have the stamina, I guess I'll say, to create a deck at this point. But some people are very good at creating decks. And even if you got that, if you don't like the cards, if you got that book and created your own card for each of those, go for it. I think that the book could be used excellently in that regard, in that way. Okay, so you um, you can see, I hope, that you have a number on the top of each of these, and the border gives what court it is. So this is autumn leaves, so it's the autumn court. The flowers are actually the summer court. I initially made a, an error in thinking the flowers were the spring, but they're not. These are the summer court. Um, this is a fairy festival card. Um, this with all of the green ferns, primarily. Maybe those are flowers, those yellow flowers. Um, there's the Garkener himself, actually. I'll show you the cards a little better here in a second. Um, but this green is spring. That's the spring court. Where's the winter? Where's the winter court? Oh, and this is a little difficult to see with the winter court because it's still green, but it's evergreens. Like you've got pine cones here. This might be ivy. At any rate, it's evergreen type plants through the winter. So I will walk you through these, which are out of order because I've shuffled them to do a deck interview. Um, so I'm going to read, instead of reading the number, I'm just going to read what it is. Fairy Horse Kelpie. Um, Triamor. And I'm going to massacre these names anyway. Triamor. Fairy Festival Midsummer. Will o' the Wisp. Um, Ariel. Yule. Robin Goodfellow. Garkener. Uh, Puka, Morgan Le Fay, Tam Lin, um, Sawin, Leprechaun. And some people don't like how, how much the, the fairies, well they just don't like the look of the fairies. They're sort of photographic. Some of these less positive ones. And it's like Maybe they wanted them to be more arty, but things like, like the Garkin are there. It's like, I think part of what's coming across is, I don't know, kind of the intersection between, as opposed to, say, a Brian Froud fairy, which is very other world and not quite intersecting with our world. Um, that this is attempting to show how the fairies could be in our world and fool us into thinking that they are in fact of our world when in fact they're not. I don't know how to say this. It's A-I-N-E. I-N-E? I don't know. Like this character, you know, where you've kind of put a human head face on a fairy body. The Oak Man. Mermaid, King Finvara, and what was I going to say? I was going to say something else about the whole looking like they become like they're, oh, I guess just art in general. Sometimes for me, art makes the deck, makes or breaks the deck, and sometimes it doesn't. In this deck, there are other things I like about it, and so some of the cards that are not very attractive doesn't doesn't bother me. Um, Gruak, Grugak, Gruagak, <laughs> something like that. Selkie, 
and Kevin's for some easy, easy to pronounce um, Grim. It's in the Grim Reaper. Fairy Dog or Black Shuck. Spriggan. Of course, one of the disadvantages. Okay, so that's a really weird looking card there. Um, so one of the disadvantages of a deck like this is that you do have to spend time. Either you have to guide, look at the guidebook every time you pull a card, or you do have to spend some time getting to know the deck. So that is certainly one disadvantage of a deck like this, but I do love them. Gwynapnud, whoever that is, it's King of the Winter. Um, Imbolc, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct either. Um... Maybe Bauth and She. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. And Knocker. Trow, maybe. Trow. Looks like an unfriendly fellow. The White Lady. Bogart. Grow. She, Kroshi, Taru, Ushti. I don't know. Have to read about it. I haven't spent time with this yet. The Sea Mither. The Elder Queen. The Woodwos. I don't know. Some of these just are amusing to me. The pictures. Uh, Jack Frost. The Blue Hag, Habitrot, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to look at the book again. I think that they might have pronunciation guide or something in the back. I'm going to look at it again to show you. Um, Leonan Shi, maybe? I don't know. Tidiman? Tidiman? Right, this one is weird and gross, but I'll keep it in there. Bogeyman. He is a bogeyman. Totally. Unseely Court. Fairy Heart or Unicorn. Astara. Or Ostara. I don't know if, you pronounce, if they stress the O. Beltane. Lugnasa. Again, I don't know if that's pronounced correctly. Banshee. The Lake Maiden. Bayfind. 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 I don't know what that is. How to pronounce it. Mob. Jenny Green Teeth. The Green Lady. Changeling. Fire Drake. Wayland Smith, Fakin, Fachin, I don't know, Queen Unak, or nu no, it's Unak, Unak, Herfest, Azray, Azray, I think it is, Azray, Azray, Billy Winkler, Billy Winker, and Pixie. So those are all of the cards. Let me see if they don't have some reference in the back. It seems like they do. No? Nope, there's a bibliography, and that's it. Do they tell us how to pronounce these things? No, they don't tell us how to pronounce knocker. We assume we know how to say. It doesn't look like it. Well, here is one. So maybe only when they deem that it's difficult. Because here they say the term, and then they say pronounced bovenshi. Bovenshi. Um, yeah. So I guess they assume... that you're going to know how to pronounce it or that they have spelled it in such a way as to make to make it easy to pr pronounce. 
You know, I just saw Tam Lin, and I don't remember seeing Tam Lin in the deck. Did I say Tam Lin? Anyway, that's my problem. I'll take a look. Hmm, I don't remember saying Tam Lin. So, there you go. There's the Fairy Ring Oracle. Um, for those of you who are into working with Fae energy and like all of the characters that show up, both positive and negative. And, again, it is definitely a deck of the seasons for those of you who like to um, use that kind of a deck for timing issues in a reading. Alrighty, there you go. Thanks so much for stopping by and taking a look at this review. I hope it helps you make a decision as to whether you want this deck. Take care. Bye-bye.